Thank you. Yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is Claude Abishir. I'm a senior science fellow for analytical sciences and nutrition for DSM. And uh, today, I would like to discuss with you how uh, measurements, diagnostics, uh, can uh, enable personalized uh, advice and uh, possible entry into personalized nutrition. Said I'm working for DSM. Uh, we do, uh, with uh, some of uh, sensing technology companies, a few large collaborations. Uh, I uh, show you a lot of um, pictures taken from the websites of these companies. Um, I do not have any uh, preference for any of these, and I do need to discuss the quality of these devices. Okay. Um, Today I'd like to uh, discuss with you uh, what we need to do to move uh, measurements and diagnostics uh, forward to the point of need, as I like to call it. How do we measure healthiness rather than disease in personalized nutrition uh, solutions? And last but not least, I will give you a couple of examples, uh, either already commercialized or uh, under development still. Personalized nutrition uh, is for you, is for me, is about us. And uh, typical uh, a solution may look like that. Uh, we would start uh, with measurement on the top right and uh, would assess status or a specific health condition, uh, enabling us to analyze, interpret, making recommendations, enabling us then to take actions on educated uh, decisions. And then as well, the second point where measurement is important is to track the progress. Huh? I want to understand whether my behavior does actually um, uh, impact and uh, gives me um, a better health, uh, a positive effect, and also want to have a validation of that. Now, uh, important question, of course, does measurement at all impact uh, my behavior? And uh, we all have, can answer that for ourselves when we stand on the balance, uh, get the weight. Is that impacting then our behavior uh, for the way behave, we behave and uh, uh, eat during the day? There's also a scientific evidence um, um, uh, available that shows that actually informed uh, participants in studies show better effects and also uh, um, uh, have uh, better compliance to, to the program. Also, uh, we also see uh, some uh, papers showing that um, the effect of a measurement is fading out, and uh, obviously a repetition of the measurement uh, is needed huh, to keep us on track, so leading us to a rather a monitoring. The three paradigm changes I'd like to um, share with you. So we need to move diagnostics, uh, analytical assays out of the lab towards handhelds and wearables. We need to uh, move away from invasive sample taking to real non-invasive sample taking. And as just mentioned, uh, uh, ideally we also can uh, replace single point measurements uh, with monitoring solutions. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for that. So, point of need, um, uh, where, where do we want to measure? And I like to think here of three uh, areas. First, of course, the intake. I would like to understand what I get through my food, be macro or micronutrients. Then, of course, in the body, I would like to learn and understand what uh, is happening. And uh, last but not least, uh, also uh, monitoring the effect and the benefits of a personalized nutrition solution. 
I will today focus mostly on uh, yeah, food supplements, but mostly on uh, uh, food and supplements, but mostly in the body measurements. I will not touch all the devices uh, that you already uh, find uh, to measure and monitor effects and benefits, mostly based on physical uh, measurements like uh, heart rate, uh, ECG, and, and BPMs, and so on. If you're interested, I added a review paper discussing the quality of these uh, measurement platforms. So, food intake. You all know the good old questionnaires, but frankly speaking, it's not what we like to do every day before breakfast. Uh, it's getting replaced uh, more and more or complemented by digital platforms, mainly three-dimensional image analysis. Uh, that allows to estimate macro as micro components and um, nutrients and uh, also these platforms are more and more uh, enhanced uh, its performance by digital science and AI based algorithms. Few small uh, instruments you can find to assess uh, composition of macro components like uh, the spectro uh, NIR spectrometer from an Israeli company shown here. I might be interested as well, uh, is there any allergens in my food or contaminants? Uh, what's the quality, the freshness of the food? Or also composition of uh, supplements that I, uh, that I uh, use. So, a few examples showing first steps into how to assess food intake by measuring. Now I'd like to uh, move over uh, to uh, measurements uh, in, in and on the body, and uh, I'd like to make use here of um, a concept uh, borrowed from uh, metabolomic groups here from Greve and Hankemeyer. Uh, when I'm thinking about how to measure healthiness, um, looking at the green line, it might be a single molecule, it might be a combination, a large set of markers or profiles. Uh, Time-wise, it might be uh, a day, a month, a lifetime, and we would like to monitor uh, such a marker over the time. And of course, it is impacted by uh, the, uh, genomics, genetics, by lifestyle, by environment. And of course, at a certain uh, stage, I may face an onset. Now, let's have a look at um, uh, closer to, uh, to the onset. Uh, usually what we do is uh, by using uh, uh, in vitro diagnostics, uh, we make use of disease markers. And once in a while, of course, also disease markers enables us to monitor the healthy status of a um, health condition. But often I believe that uh, there, is, uh, there would be a need for more and new markers that allows us to, to capture and monitor uh, the healthy status in a personalized nutrition solution. Here I'm thinking about uh, health benefit conditions like hydration or nutritional status or eye health and more. Now how to move, I now uh, discuss shortly um, how to move uh, analytical uh, protocols out of the lab towards wearables and in the second part how to move from the invasive to the real non-invasive uh, part. Human sensors for quite some centuries have been the only way how to become, how to do actually uh, non-invasive uh, measurements only. So lab assays as we all know it, gold standard still for uh, blood taking but of course as well for the, for the food and, and, and supplements and more. What I'd like to add up here is um, when we move the analytical technologies out of the lab, we miniaturize, uh, we do lose uh, often quality of the measurement, less uh, accuracy, lower sensitivity, uh, specificity, and often precision e gets lost totally and replaced by a relative readout, which is okay as long as it is fitting the purpose. But it's important to keep that in mind when how we look at all these devices bringing us further 
and closer to uh, the point of need measurements. So, uh, first two examples, uh, moving out of the lab, um, on desktop, uh, Bionalit is a company that developed uh, workflows for vitamins and, and carotenoids. Uh, you can carry that around and do the respective measurements in biological samples and also in some food and diary. Breath, I selected this example I like very much. Uh, volatile organic compounds is uh, molecules that enables us to monitor in a very easy way health conditions. And uh, here an example, uh, an instrument on desk that allows us to monitor and uh, screen samples very easily. Nanos at the bottom, uh, Israeli company, they brought uh, that uh, measurement concept a step further, developed uh, a small handheld. It's actually calibrated for disease markers, uh, cancer markers, and uh, to, to have a prediction of uh, these illnesses. And uh, last year they got um, an awarded for uh, uh, for the miniaturization, they brought it on, on, on smartphone scale um, and uh, it's now prototyped. Uh, Bioimpedance analysis, another technology you all know very well, mostly from balances uh, or even bigger ones, so it can stand on. Uh, two companies that have miniaturized BIA. Uh, so you can take it in your pockets and uh, use on the go. Fit receiving also uh, comes up with the first um, a smart clothing uh, that allows continuous uh, measurement. Glucose monitoring, a, a handheld, an example for a handheld on a spectroscopic uh, base. So wearables, um, of course, that's um, where we would like to uh, have all all the devices um, uh, ready. I have included here uh, the glucose measurements. Uh, glucose measurement is, um, is, a, is, a, is a big driver for the technology development uh, of these uh, devices. And do not discuss uh, the individual um, uh, products individually. Uh, you all know them. I have added um, a review paper Joe Wang, uh, you can uh, have all uh, more details there. But importantly is that these technology drivers, they also enable new solutions for markers in the nutrition field, right? And uh, it's still a bit, uh, you know, slow, but uh, we see uh, companies picking that up. And uh, one example here, a ring that you can carry and it actually measures light exposure. So you get uh, UV and it also is calibrated to estimate the vitamin D production during your day out in the sun or in the shadow. Okay, now how to move uh, from the invasive to the non-invasive uh, sample taking. And once more, I'd like just to uh, stress the fact that in, in blood, we do have rather good insights on markers, especially for diseases, a bit less for uh, well, how to monitor the healthy status. And uh, when we then look at, at biological samples, that allows us to, to, to create non-invasive sampling concepts like uh, saliva, tears, then yeah, we, we have good, good insights in urine, a bit in ISF, but for all the others that would also qualify for is a rather desert-like picture. Yeah, now uh, moving a uh, step uh, further, minimal invasive, uh, finger picking is considered as minimal invasive, we have uh, quite a few commercial solutions uh, available that you can include in studies. Uh, for vitamins, I added one up, but also for uh, uh, the omega-3 index uh, and more. Exela is, uh, is a nice um, uh, platform that offers uh, actually a solution to test uh, the microbiome health by assessing blood markers of the host. Vitascan uh, actually did, uh, and all these um, uh, solutions uh, uh, enabled the 
sample taking at home or in a pharmacy, but the analysis is done in the laboratories, of course, also then delivering the good quality of the analytical results. VitaScan has brought the measurement towards the point of need. So it is a, a readout system uh, that uh, is basing on uh, lateral flow assays, um, enables to measure a few of the micronutrients, and it can be done then instantaneously, so a um, uh, uh, droplet of blood on the stick, and you can do the readout, and in five minutes you get basically the result. Um, the companies or the personalized nutrition solution uh, we find today uh, already and working on blood samples create uh, good quality data and that enables as well uh, new uh, uh, insights and uh, into markers uh, for personalized uh, nutrition solutions and there is a need for more of that. A very uh, interesting solution I'd like to share here is, uh, is also based on uh, blood taking, but with micro needles. Uh, the device for the blood taking is validated uh, from 7 cents. Base has included it in her uh, solution. So the blood is taken, most uh, pain free, sent to the lab. Accredited lab is doing the analysis and the platform then uh, uh, produces feedback, personalized feedback and recommendations for the dietary supplement solution. Now, where we really want to, to go at the end uh, is, is really non-invasive uh, uh, measurements, uh, so no skin breach. Just a few examples, one uh, for assessing estimating minerals, uh, another one, uh, oximeter, you all know, that's a, a, a solution developed uh, formerly by the group of Fer Professor Fer Fermer, uh, calibrated uh, for our, to observe our, our arterial stiffness and uh, calibrated uh, for the vitamin K need. But uh, just a simple uh, oximeter. The next step, actually, uh, for, for on-skin measurement, um, might be wearables that integrates these sensors. Today we see uh, products like Hexoskin on the market integrating physical uh, sensors, physical measurements, and in the future uh, we hopefully going to see also chemical sensors integrated uh, to monitor different status of nutrition. At that point, I'd like to um, share with you um, uh, another nice um, uh, device, uh, it actually allows to uh, measure on skin carotenoids and uh, we wanted to know, and it's correlated with the antioxidant uh, uh, level in blood, and we actually wanted to test whether this device can pick up uh, kind of an intervention and give me as a consumer the feedback, yes, uh, you have a positive uh, impact of the intervention or not. So you see here uh, the group, the control and the, and the intervention group and uh, what we can see over the time, roughly six weeks, um, yeah, there is a small but significant um, uh, um, increase. Where it comes much more interesting is if we look at an individual participant, i show you here. So you see uh, the start and then actually uh, the intervention. There was Christmas, a bit less compliance and no capsules taken anymore. Uh, some kind of washout and then in, in, uh, in February again, uh, capsules were taken and we can see a turnaround in the readout of the system and here what you see is not an absolute value, it's not an accurate value, it's a, it's a score kind of uh, 1 to 10 uh, relative and relevant only for me as an individual. But I can follow start, intervention and also deviations thereof. Yeah, um, saliva. Uh, 
qualifies very well also for uh, measurement tools. In academia, we see a lot of uh, technologies developed. Um, uh, uh, track is a prototyped uh, solution that allows to monitor a variety of uh, health conditions, nutrition, performance, hydration, uh, in a very uh, consumer acceptable uh, version. Uh, urine, we have there quite some markers available we can make use of. Uh, you all know uh, the clinical assays, of course, as well as the sticks we can use. Interpretation of results um, is often uh, usually done by professionals. I like very much a solution that is developed by Wellmetrics currently. Uh, they translated uh, some of these assays into a, a mobile platform uh, and uh, actually allow and enable a readout on the antioxidant damage capacity and the level of inflammation. As well, a nice translation into how to monitor them myself over the time, right? Good. I'm doing time-wise. Great. Great. Thank you. <laughs> so sweat and interstitial fluid um, is also um, uh, uh, samples that uh, we can take uh, non-invasively from the body. And uh, we can extract um, the molecules from interstitial fluid by reverse ionophoresis. We can put it in tattoo sensors, like you see the ones here from the group of jo Joseph Wong, the UCSD, and do electrochemical uh, experiments, um, as estimating then uh, glucose, lactate, alcohol, and more. And of course, uh, very nice if we could uh, move here the needle also towards uh, markers relevant for nutrition. Uh, talking about um, the composition of uh, these fluids, uh, today uh, we still do not know enough what molecules and potential markers uh, are in ISF, how is the uh, kinetics between these uh, fluids and blood, the kinetics and also the diffusion is all things that uh, need uh, to be worked on in research. Last but not least, uh, microbiome of course as well, uh, an excellent uh, sample uh, to, to monitor and, uh, and, and measure in a, a non-invasively uh, way. Two solutions, uh, mostly uh, we look at diversity, dysbiosis, or abundance of specific microorganisms, and platforms then uh, translate with uh, some help of uh, artificial intelligence and other tools into recommendations for personal meals and so on. So I'd like to uh, shortly wrap up. Um, I. I showed that um, measurements actually can influence positively uh, feedback and uh, increase the benefit in uh, nutrition programs. There is a need for new and validated markers to uh, assess the healthiness, the healthy status of an individual, and we want to do that uh, non-invasive, pain-free. There is a need for new data, mostly out of longitudinal studies of, uh, of, of uh, healthy people. Need to move from single point measurements to monitoring. And I showed you a few examples how to move the assays out of the lab towards the point of need to the consumer, and also uh, how to do that in a mostly, hopefully, non invasive way. If you allow me a uh, last. Um, and share vision, uh, wear and forget, I think is uh, what uh, we would like to uh, see in future. So integrating uh, many different uh, sensors for, for physical measurements, for chemical measurements, and uh, basically uh, enabling us uh, continuous feedback and enabling uh, personalized recommendations. Okay. 
Thank you for your attention and I'm all yours.